Hey guys, OCP Communications, and this video will probably be uploaded on OCP TV. OCP TV. Um, by the time you see this, probably won't be my birthday anymore, but today is my birthday. The day I'm doing this video is my birthday, so if you want to wish me a happy birthday or happy belated birthday in the comments below, feel free to do so. Anyway, um, as usual, I waited way too long to do one of these updates, so <laughs> I got a lot of, I got my work cut out for me, so to speak. I'm going to try to go as fast as I can through this, though. Um, I really don't want to take luxurious amount of time here. But I won't, you know, rut. I won't be rushing. But just just part of the update, okay, I'm just going to show you what I got in store for you. And I'm going to show a little bit of kind of how I redecorated my room. So it's like a little bit extra kind of a tour in a way, so to speak. So, oh, now we're all over the place. Oh, crap. Um, look at all that. Okay, look at look at that. Look, we got um. <laughs> that's the tapes. Okay, now now we got this whole stack of laser discs here. Um, I got more laser discs over here. Stack is my cowboy's hat. And we got DVDs here. Let's see there. Is that a, is that what I think it is? Did that possibly be something else? And then, oh, I don't know if you guys have ever seen it. That's my TV. It's my TV that is not, you know, it's pretty cool. I've got a good will. It doesn't do 3D for some reason. Well, because it's old. That's probably why. There's my whole giant rack of tapes here. Uh, this just a shelf just covered in full of tapes. There's the 8-track player. There's my shelf, the bookshelves. And then these are what I'm just going to show you. You see that in the corner here? I'm trying to, try to get a better look at it here. Um, over there. That's my Wolfen poster, but right next to it is my Leviathan poster. And if we can get maybe a closer look, I'm gonna zoom in or something. Nah, I don't want to take a chance with that. I'm giving you a cheeky cam. Oh no, there's an earthquake. Um, and the other poster that you've been looking at with most of my other reviews is, if I can get this, okay, is the Vindicator. And that's the Vindicator poster. And then we can crane this all the way around here. That's Dark Man. So that's basically how I've redecorated my room. I got another thing I'm going to show you. But, oh, there's Rocky IV. Standy. There's a little blank wall I can put some posters on. So, and there's my computer. And there's me. Hi. Hey. And then there's, this, this is basically, there's, there's a can of mellow yellow. Okay, all right. <laughs> There's a little tour of basically my room, the way it is right now. Um, if you enjoy it, cool. If you didn't, I, you know, that's understandable. Um, but anyway, um, let's get into this, shall we? I'm gonna start off with some tapes here. Some this is called Trail of a Killer. This is another one of those Avalanche Entertainment shiny covers. You know, a lot of these crappy movie companies really should write to video shit. They had to, be, they had to have shiny covers to get people to buy it. Didn't pay too much for it though. It sounded interesting. It's got Chris Penn and Michael Madsen in it. It's like a serial killer flick. So, I'll, I'll give it a look sometime, but not anytime soon. So we got that one. Got Moon Trap. This is not the original release. This is a rental case. Um, just wanted the copy of it again because my copy's in Oklahoma. This is a great underrated movie. This movie kicks the shit out of Lockout. Um, you want to see a climax like Lockout done the right way? Watch Moon Trap. And for, it's, I just want to see a DVD of this in good quality. The tape on this, I mean the VHS tape, it's pretty. This tape itself, it's watchable, but it's pretty crappy. But I mean, you know, it doesn't matter because it's such a great movie. But it's a good thing I still have my. Uh, the rip that I got off online of Moon Trap off of VHS is better quality than this. But why can't we get like a widescreen, you know, crystal clear quality of Moon Trap? Now that I have a Blu-ray player, I wouldn't even care if it's even on Blu-ray. Code Red did Red Scorpion. Let's do, let's do, or was it Code Red? Or whoever did Red Scorpion, I don't remember what company did it. It's Code Red or somebody else, but whoever did it, it's coming out soon. And do Red, do Moon Trap next, man. It's quite a shame this is not on DVD and is 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 we're relegated to watching this underrated awesome flick 
that, you know, is basically virus on the moon, but kicks the ever-loving crap out of virus, you know? The only movie that Chekhov, you know, Walter Coyne's ever starred in, and it's got nothing. It's, it's, it's This tape, you know, it works okay, but I want to see a high-def version of this film. Then I got this. I went to a worldwide flea. I went to a, not a worldwide. I went to uh, the biggest flea market, you know, and, and uh, basically it was like this. You know, there's like a flea market that was going on in the state in Oregon. The biggest flea market, you know, 500, you know, biggest garage sale, 500 vendors. So I went there with my grandma, and it was a fucking hellhole, man. You had like so many people there. It was crazy. You had people. There's one time I'm trying to look at one place. I'm trying to get to one place to the other, and I'm trying to walk in this, you know, the tight space, and I'm trying to get between, you know, get, you know, I managed to squeeze my way through somebody. Now actually, I'm just walking. I'm walking normally. Then somebody shows up, blocks my way. Then then I'm trying. Then I'm like, okay, now I gotta like do this thing where I gotta move like this you know sideways to get through them and then another person shows up and we almost run into each other and the one person's like hey watch where you're going jerk and I'm like what what I didn't even say anything. it was just so stunned somebody got mad at me when they're the one that cut me off it's like being in fucking traffic there was stupid there was stupid shit like you're in the you're if you've ever been in one of these flea market style places man it's fucking busy as shit it's so fucking packed. It's like you're like rats in a cage. It's got fun. You, you literally have. I mean, seriously, um, it's fucking hot in there, you know. And then you got you know some you know fat ass you know chick just fucking standing there in the middle of the fucking, just in the middle of the fucking roadway, basically in the middle of the walkway. She's just standing there, probably just catching her breath, like, <gasps> and she's standing right next to a fucking bitch. Sit the fuck down! Get out of my way! There were moments literally where you almost got a pile up, like a car crash. You had some guy, some guy who's too fat or too lazy to walk, so he drives around on a scooter to another kid who's in a wheelchair, person who's in a wheelchair because he has to be, and they're going head on, man, and I'm right in the fucking middle. I'm like, oh shit, gotta, do, I gotta, do I gotta roll out of the way? Do I gotta jump out of the way before there's a fucking crash? It was crazy. And so I got some other stuff, like I got some movies, I'm going to show you some. And I got some trading cards. I got some Turtles trading cards, you know, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie trading cards. And the Turtles 3 and Turtles 2 ones were, were in good shape, but the Turtles 1 ones were horrible. It's like they got fucking, I don't know, they got wet and got dried out, or they fucking got pissed on and left an attic somewhere. It was horrible. It was like, ah oh, man, it was awful. It was like... I was really looking forward to it. It's shitty. Oh, yeah, the Turtles 3 cards. Oh, they're in great mint condition. But the Turtles 1 cards, you get shit. Just sucked. So, anyway, off, you know, going on, a, you know, basically the reason why I'm leading it up to talking about the flea market, you know, the garage sales, because this is where I got it. I got Doing Time over there. And this is a clamshell release. I like these. This is not on DVD, it's like a little uh, short 80 minute long comedy. That was actually, it starred Richard Mulligan as Mango, Jeff Altman, Day Young, and John Vernon, and Jimmy Walker. You know, Jimmy Dynamite Walker was in this. Judy Landers. So, some comedy, basically. I thought I'd give it a shot. I got it for a dollar or so. I actually paid 50 cents for it, I think. So, it was a pretty good deal. So, doing time. 50 cents. <sighs> I still can't believe I paid two bucks for this. You're gonna be like, what? You've gotta be kidding me. I'm like, yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. No, no, I paid a dollar for it. I didn't pay two dollars, I paid two, one. Okay, I got this at Goodwill. <sighs> the Minion. Look at that scary skeleton, oh shit. Where did you steal that from? Uh, the fucking, somebody, uh, the science class? You see what's from my science teacher's science class about anatomy? What the hell is this cheap shit? I mean, come on now. I guess it's Witchblade with Dolph Lundgren or some shit. He finds some power glove or whatever. I haven't seen this yet. I've heard it's awful. Or it's one of Dolph Lundgren's worst. Thought I'd pick it up because every other time I saw this, 
for sale, there would be another movie in there. Last time I saw this for sale, there was like part one of Pearl Harbor. I was like, well, yeah, that's just about, it's probably just about as shitty, but that's a minion, a movie I'm probably just going to hate to death, but at least I can say I have it, so I can pop it in, watch it someday, and cry it myself to sleep later. Uh, this is a, we got a Hellbound, Hellraiser 2. I just got blurry. That, stop. What the hell? Hellbound, Hellraiser 2. This is an unrated version. Um, I got this for a dollar. Got this at the garage sale, flea market thing. Um, this one has, and you're probably hearing some people talking in the back. That's my mom and Troy. They're talking. So, um. I don't know what they're talking about, but anyway, we have Hellbound, Hellraiser 2, it's a good sequel, it says it's from Goodwill, but not really, I guess somebody got it from Goodwill and then decided to give it to me, but anyway, it works pretty well, it's got some good interesting trailers, it's got the trailer, like a teaser little 30 second trailer for The Punisher before it, and Warlock, it was like funny, and they all said coming soon to a theater near you, it was like yeah my ass, none of these movies are coming out in theaters, <laughs> nice one New World. So, but this is Hellbound and Hellraiser 2. Go well with my Hellraiser VHS 2. I paid way too fucking much for this, I understand. I paid, as you can see, $2.99. $3 for Ninja Turtles, The Next Mutation, VHS. Um, it was so mad that I really didn't think I needed to review it. It wasn't, it wasn't total shit, though. I didn't find myself hating Venus. Um, I found myself liking parts of it. I liked some of, you know, the action sequences. The choreography was decent. Um, the turtles didn't look... They didn't... They looked better than they did in Turtles 3, okay? They definitely did look better in Turtles 3, in my opinion. The villain, the Dragon Lord, was kind of lame. His uh, sidekick was like the one that looked like one of the Muppets from the SNL, first season of SNL, in the Land of Gorch. I could have sworn it's the same fucking Muppet. Then you had really the biggest problem with this show and with this pilot. This is basically put together 75 minutes of the three-part pilot, you know, Ninja Turtles and Next Mutation. Yeah, Michael Bay, this is called Ninja Turtles before you're Ninja Turtles, so don't act like you're doing something new and different. I don't know why the Turtles all had to have fucked up masks in different versions of it. Rap shredded up mask was kind of cool. Donnie... What the hell is that? What the fuck is he doing? He looks like a retard. He's supposed to be the smartest guy and he's wearing a full do-rag on his head. It just looks fucking dumb, man. It looks dumb. And Leo suffers from the same problem as well. I don't know why all of a sudden the producers of the show decided we need to make the turtles look like they fucking, I don't know, took a bunch of steroids. They're like ripped. It's just not really, it takes a little bit getting used to. I admit with Matt, I could see myself watching more episodes of this. It's not really, like, the best thing ever, but it's not the worst thing ever either. I mean, some of the one-liners, some of the one-liners were fun. But then again, there, some of them were bad. I don't like the stupid sound effects whenever they're fighting. Like, doink, doink, doink. This is stupid. So what is, it's not the Three Stooges, right? But yes, once again, the Turtles do still suffer from the buck tooth problem in this, but... I thought it was ten times better than Turtles 3. Like, I, I, I found, actually found this a lot more entertaining than Turtles 3. Which is kind of sad. And Raph riding on a motorcycle is kind of cool. But anyway, Nice Mutation is watchable at best. Maybe once. I don't think I'll watch it again anytime soon. This is Check in the Mail. I don't know if I already talked about it or not. As you can hear, doesn't sound like it works, right? I got it because Brian Dennehy was in it. I like Brian Dennehy. And then as you can see, I was so fucking worried about this. Um, is it supposed to be like th this? Remember correct? No. So I got a broken tape from Goodwill. But it works. It, it works. I don't know how, but it works. <laughs> it made the weird... It made the most... It made one of the most weird sounds and I was rewinding it. I felt like the VCR was going to explode. It was like... Ring you, you. It was like... It was like oh, 
But this is the check is in the mail. Um, I wanted to get another copy of this awesome movie, Screamers. Great film, underrated film. Unlike some dumbass's web fucking list on that Matt showed me on Skype last night. Fuck it, idiot. He's always like, Screamers is horrible. This is a stupid lead. Was P. Weller like the ninth choice in the sci fi lead list? No, he's probably like maybe the third or fourth or maybe even the second choice, in all honesty, because he's been in a lot of good sci fi films. Robocop, you know, Buckaroo Banzai, Screamers. You could consider maybe Leviathan somewhat of a sci fi film. So, Screamers is underrated. Good film. Sequel sucks dick, but I wanted to get another copy of Screamer when I get co Screamers again to check it out. So, a Screamers. Um, I only paid a dollar for it. Then we got Cherry Two Thousand. I got this at the. F I don't even know why I bought this. At the it was like fifty cents, and I was like, okay, but I, I hate this. This movie isn't even that good. I don't. Even why? Then do I? I don't even know why I do purchases like this. It's fifty cents. I'm like, I can complete my collection. Put Cherry 2000 in there, but I like the score. But Basil Poor Doris, he does a good job. Melanie Griffiths is good, but even though she doesn't do that much, but I've already reviewed this movie. I don't need to talk about this again. But Cherry 2000, yeah, one of those. <laughs> so I fucking purchased this. Um, this is Grave Secrets: The Legacy of Hilltop Drive. That's a good will. This is uh, basically based on a supposedly true story of a haunted house in the somewhere. And uh, I thought give it a look. I've heard some good things about it. So, yeah, it's got David Soul and Patty Duke. And I got this at the garage sale thing as well. This is Everybody Wins with Nick Nolte and Deborah Winger. It's pretty cheap. And I was like thinking, like, okay, I've heard it might be an interesting thriller. I read about it, you know, I heard about it, and I like Nick Nolte and Deborah Winger, so see what they can bring. Deborah Winger, I think, is an underrated actress. She did a fantastic job on Mike's Murder. So this is never one of those type of thrillers, you know. I wanted to see what she could bring to the role again. So this is Everybody Wins, even though I don't even understand the title. I don't get it. I didn't watch the movie, and I'll get why it's called Everybody Wins. This is Zombies. And you're like, oh my god, that looks awful. I got this for 50 cents at a garage sale. So I was like, okay, 50 cents, why not? Actually, it was a quarter. I got this for a quarter. It wasn't even 50 cents, it was a quarter. I got this for a quarter at a garage sale. So, yeah. Starring Jenica Garcia, Jamique Sellers, Randy Clark. I've never even heard of any of these actors or actresses. Featuring rap mogul Daniel Demo Thomas with the music video Hold That. So this is Hold Zombies. <laughs> Trash Cinema. This is kind of fucking suck. I guarantee you this is going to suck. So we have that. I don't know if I showed this already. This is Chuck Norris's One Riot Run Ranger. This is the one of the pilot episodes put together. Well, not one of the pilots. One of the episodes. Two or three parters put together. One of the more exciting ones, I remember correctly, about the terrorist guy. Yeah. Oh, get bank robbers. Brutal gang of bank robbers. This is Texas Walker, Texas Ranger. Um, got this at the garage sale thing as well. This is Vigilante on VHS. This is uh, not really the best cover art. It's kind of cheap, but this is the original director's cut. This is the Star Maker size Anchor Bay release. So basically, it's the one that's digital remastered from Adobe Stereo Printmaster. It's a widescreen VHS. It has uh, domestic and international theatrical trailers, TV spots, and stills that appear at the film's conclusion. So it basically, has the same features that the Laserdisc has on the VHS. And I got it for a dollar, so I was like, okay, I'll, I want. I've heard about Vigilante, and I'll give it a shot. So. I like the music. I thank Effrey for introducing me to that. Um, got this is good will, and I really was glad I could pick it up. This is the cheaper version. This is not the same re-release. The same. This isn't the collector's edition, but it still works. This trilogy of terror. The only movie horror film or movie I can think of that I really, actually, genuinely, really like Karen Black in, <laughs> because I don't like her in very many other films. Don't like her in Invaders from Mars. I hate, fucking hate her in Children of Night. Children of the Night, that she's good in this. She plays two roles and does a really good job. Of course, 
the best thing about everyone really remembers is that damn Zuni fetish doll. Which is so ridiculous, but Dan Curtis does such a great job with the directing that it makes it genuinely creepy. Trilogy of Terror is a classic TV horror film. So, yeah, it's, it's definitely... I don't think it's terrifying, but it's good. This is Combat Academy. I don't know if I have this in Oklahoma or not. This is a crappy Star Maker release. Yes, but it works. I've wanted to see this because Keith Gordon is in it. Yeah, I'm starring in Combat Academy. You can give it a look. No, no, no. Not, you know, basically it's like a kind of police academy type thing, but with a, you know, kind of combat military academy. It's like a military academy meets police academy. And you got, you got Keith Gordon, you got Jamie Farr, you got Sherman Hemsley, you got Bernie Copel, Mitchell Mall, and John Ratzenberger. What a freaking cast. This is Combat Academy. It looked like a lot of fun in the trailers that I've seen, so I'll give it a look sometime, Combat Academy. Definitely see they're trying to go for the Police Academy thing, because they call it it's the same font, you know, as Police Academy, the comment. This is Don't Let Look Back with Eric Stoltz. Um, at that at the garage sale too. I wanted to give it a look because it sounded like an interesting plot. Looks like a, I heard it was a good role by um, Derek Stoltz. What he basically plays is a bum, a guy who basically you know, just Jesse Parrish. He just took a wrong turn. He's a down and out uh, musician with a bad, bad drug habit, and he stumbled on a drug deal gone awry and found himself a suitcase full of money which he aims to keep. So basically, the whole thing is like. What is he gonna do? He's just basically a bum who his life didn't turn out the way he'd hoped it would. And he gets a second chance and a new opportunity. And, uh, you know, when you're worth more dead than alive, run hard fast. Run hard, run fast, but don't look back. And I kind of like, you know, it kind of sounded interesting. Like a realistic sort of drama, you know, mixed with maybe some action. But I wanted to give it a shot because I like Eric Stoltz. I think he's an underrated actor, so wanted to see what else he could he could bring to a role like this. So we got Don't Look Back. Um, got this at Goodwill for a dollar. Hollow Man. Um, I wanted to check it out again. I remember really liking this film. I remember being the true, last truly kick-ass Paul Verhoeven film. I remember Kevin Bacon being downright sadistic and creepy in this. So... Yeah, I wanted to give it another look. It, was something, it had some really good effects in it, too, if I remember correctly. So this is Hollow Man. Um, this is one of the few tapes that I got from this one seller, the garage sale thing, that was offering me eight tapes for one dollar. Eight, you know, eight tapes for a dollar. So I really could not turn down that offer. And I found some tapes that I really probably never watch otherwise. Like this, Men of Respect, I probably would never even bought anyway. But it's like a, a, a kind of crime drama, you know, a mafia type thing with John Turturro and Dennis Faria and Peter Boyle and Stanley Tucci and Rod Seiger, of course. And, you know, okay, I'll give it a look. See John Turturro try to play, you know, a more serious role. I thought he's always been kind of an underrated actor anyway, ever since I saw him in Barton Fink. And, yeah, this is Men of Respect. Um, uh, and we have, I got this at a thrift store, um, for yeah, about two bucks, a little bit more than I, you know, maybe should have, but this is After the Shock, which is about the earthquake of, you know, 89, the San Francisco earthquake in 89. Um, it's got Yafik Koto, Rue McClanahan, Jack Scally, and Scott Valentine, and it's directed by Gary Sherman, who directed Color Guys 3. So, I wanted to... See what he could bring. And I saw a doc. I saw a trailer for this on a screening copy, which actually was a little mixed with kind of behind the scenes of this. So I was sort of interested in this. So it's based on a true story. I think it was a made-for-TV film. So this is after the shock. Not the best cover art, really. Not really. But uh, then I got this for twenty-five cents at a garage sale. This is Twisted with Christian Slater. You have heard it's a pile of shit. It was a quarter. So, you can't blame me for a quarter there. Um, this is another one part of the eight for a dollar. This is Treat Williams and Venomous. I guess it's another Killer Snake movie, but with Treat Williams. It's rated PG-13. It's got one of those stupid white tapes for some reason the Fox probably liked to do in the late 90s. I don't know what they were thinking. 
but you know, it's your own. So basically, I'll, I could give it a shot. You know, you know, for eight for a dollar, I'll give it a shot sometime. I like Treat Williams, although it might be a pile of shit, but you know, you'll definitely know if it is. So this is venomous. I don't even know why I bought this. I don't even know what I was doing. This is I got this for a dollar too much. A dollar too much probably. This is Final Fantasy Spirits Within. As you can see, the cover looks like I might have gotten some water damage or something. Even though the tape that I got was like unopened. But anyway, this is the movie that you know Matt did a good review on, produced by you know Columbia Pictures and Square Pictures. And the first ever movie is an ambitious project. You know, based on a popular video game, but the movie isn't based on the video game at all. That's a bright idea. Square. Pictures. Stupid. So, anyway. Final Fantasy Spirits Within. Heard it was shit. I've heard the graphics are good. I don't, or I don't really care. I just want to see if it's really as bad as everyone says it is. So, yeah. Sometimes there are sometimes I spend a dollar to see if something's really as bad. Like movies like this, like Godsend. I saw the trailer. The trailer looked like it might be an interesting film, an interesting idea. Um, it's got some good, you know, critic, you know, critic, critical acclaim. Now I know Matt hates it. I know a lot of people call it a piece of shit. I haven't seen this film, so I thought it looked interesting. So what was me? You know, I might see it, and then then I'll know why it sucks so much. So just give me a chance to see it to see if it su really does suck as much as one says it does. But the trailer actually genuinely interests me. It sounded interesting. The whole plot of Greg Kinnear and his son basically dying. You know, you know, you know, you know when you, you know, dying before he can reach his prime, and and you know he and his wife are desperate to do anything, to do anything to resurrect their kid, and then Robert De Niro, some genetic research guy, and then he offers to clone their son. So, sounded interesting to me. And Greg Kinnear looked like he was bringing a good performance. So, I'll, I'll give it a look sometime. Godsend. But, you know. Hell, I might end up liking it. You never know. Um, this is Escape Velocity. <laughs> what is this? Gas, CGI, bullshit. Look at this shit. It looks horrible. What the fuck? Uh, this is Maverick Entertainment. <laughs> I don't know what we're getting into there. The stars Patrick stars Patrick Bergen, Wendy Crewson, Michelle Bowen, and Peter Outerbridge. I mean, this is never a sci-fi movie. Said the future. So, but I saw the trailer and it actually looked like it might be somewhat interesting. So. That was part of another one of the movies that was in the eight dollars, you know, in a one a eight for one dollar. So I was like, okay, I'll give it a look. Escape Velocity, you know, that awful cover. Space Truckers. You're like, what? And I'm, like, I'm sorry, I don't mind this film. I don't think it's it's total pile of shit. You know, Matt feels, uh, you know, he thinks Shaft is like a B movie. You know, I, that's how I feel about Space Truckers. I've always enjoyed this movie. And you know, I saw it when I was a kid and I like I really like these robots right there. I really like those robots, really good design and you know, and I had fun with it. Some decent effects, some corny one corny lines, but Stuart Gordon made an entertaining movie. It's a silly idea, but I, I enjoyed Space Truckers. I haven't seen it in a while and I wanted to check it out again. In some ways sort of reminded me of Star Trek Troopers. But not really that much. But yeah, this is Space Truckers. I mean, Harry Knowles liked it. But, you know, yeah, this is Space Truckers. I mean, it's definitely one of the better Sterling Entertainment films. They make a lot of shitty movies. The Swan. <laughs> so, we have that. And we have Van Damme Classic Bloodsport. Got it for a quarter at Garage Sale. I wanted to check it out again. So, I was like, can't turn down Bloodsport for a quarter. I mean, come on now. That's Blood Sport. Uh, we have, this is another one of those, you know, movies, you know, eight for one dollar. Brainiac, Drainiac. They'll suck the life out of you. Really kind of crazy cover. Got some practical effects in the back. 
Looks like an absolutely ridiculous movie. I've seen the trailer. It just looks absolutely crazy. So I was like, okay, I'll give it a look. It's like a fucking evil pipes or something. Like there's ghost in the plumbing or some shit. It's crazy. Crazy. I got this for a dollar at Goodwill. Wanted to give this another shot. You know, and I wanted to see it again. And this is the Universal Special Edition of End of Days and VHS. So this is the one that basically it has a it has a special effects featurette, the creation of the train sequence, and it has two music videos from Ever Austin, Rob Zombie. I haven't seen Under Days in a while, but I remember being kind of underrated. I remember thinking Arnold Schwarzenegger delivering a great performance that proved that he can he can actually kind of act, but he never really did another role like this, unless you want to count collateral damage. Maybe last the last stand will be sort of more kind of like the collateral damage or end of days. But I think this movie gets a lot of crap, and I don't understand it. It's a solid film, and I wanted to give her another look. It's efficiently creepy, too. It's got some really good action scenes, too. Of course, it's got that, you know, You're a fucking choir boy compared to me. A choir boy. It's great. Great one-liner, too. This is a movie called In the Mood. Patrick Dempsey. Um, it was a, It's based on a true story about this guy named Sonny Weiscarver. It was a teenage boy who has the most astounding knack with women. Older women, beautiful women, married women. So, basically, he's a womanizer. He's more of a man at 15 than most men are at 35. So, it's directed by Phil, on Ro Robertson, Wal Phil Alden Robinson. And it was another one I got for a quarter. And I saw the trailer trailers a little bit before this. And there's and before the film there's an interview with the actual guy who is he was part who is the basis on this film, uh, the Woo Woo Kid, um, the real Sonny Wise Carver. And it was really interesting to see this guy talk about it. And from the clips they were showing, it looked like a good period piece and looked like it might be some fun. So in the mood, it's like a teenage, finally a teenage comedy for adults is the tagline. But I like Patrick Dempsey. I liked him when he was doing his movies in the '80s where he was. Kind of the nerdy guy, you know. <laughs> this is Deadly Sunday. I got this for 50 cents at the garage sale. Probably a piece of shit, but lightning video release and not on DVD, probably. I have to give chances on those. It stars nobody. I, I, Dennis Ely is the only guy that sort of, sort of sounds familiar, but nothing else. So, yeah. Low budget pile of Sherlock, Sherlock probably, or shit. Either way, Deadly Sunday. Um, this is Rain of Fire. I wanted to give this another shot. Last time I saw it or tried to see it, it was with my dad, and he had his parents staying over, and his parents were upstairs. My dad had a lot, like an apartment, and you know, downstairs and upstairs, and his parents were staying upstairs. And they're making all this racket and wouldn't, you know, turn their TV up really loud because they couldn't fucking hear. And we're trying to watch Rain of Fire and we couldn't because they had their fucking sound blaring on their TV. And my dad would turn around and be like, shut the hell up. Just turn the fucking TV down. What? Turn it down. What? Turn it down. <laughs> That's all I remember about Rain of Fire is what? Turn it down. This is Rain of Fire. That's why I need to give it another look. I'm Christian Bale. And I don't think he sounds like, you know, all gargly in, in that, and then doesn't sound like a gargoyle in that one. This is a Deadly Friend. I want to give another look. Sounded. I have a copy of this in Oklahoma. But there's another one that's eight for a dollar. You know, one eight for a dollar deal. You know, as part of that deal. I have a Deadly Friend to look. So, yeah. Deadly Friend. So, got some good performances in it. Some crazy sequences, basketball to the head. I was really, really kind of excited about this. Well, I think I have it in Oklahoma, but I'm never sure. This is Vietnam, Texas. You know, this is a movie directed by Robert Ginty. He stars Robert Ginty and Hannah Snore. And it sounded like a good idea for a film. I saw the trailer, it looked interesting. Basically, Robert Ginty plays a priest who wasn't always a priest, he was a man of war, you know, he was in Vietnam, he thought he left his past behind, now he wants it back. So in a way, you can sort of sort of look at it as if the exterminator decided to uh, clean up his ways and become a priest, 
And then, you know, his past came back to haunt him. <laughs> Vietnam, Texas. So, I haven't given a look yet, but I've heard some good things about this film, too. This is Prom Night. And what Jamie Lee Curtis. Um, this is the Virgin Vision release. So, it's got some fun trailers. It's a trailer for Kidnap before it. Kidnap looks like a good movie. So, I want to see if I can find it. Somewhere. This is Prom Night. It's one of a lot more sturdy, better cover, better looking release than, you know, the crappy other cheap ass releases that the film has gotten on VHS. And there were a numerous amount of those. A dollar. Yes, the Psycho remake. You're like, why? And that's it. Because I wanted to give it a real look. See if this film truly does live up to its reputation. For a dollar, why not? See if the film really does live up to the reputation. See if the film actually is really, truly as bad and awful as everyone says it is. Because I remember the last time I saw this, I remember liking the supporting cast. I remember liking William H. Macy. I thought he really did, did a good job. I like Julianne Moore. I like, I really like Viva Mortensen. But I fucking hated, you know, Vince Vaughn and Anne Heche. So, and Vince Vaughn is just, what kind of fucking casting is that? Whose bright idea was to cast the guy from Swingers as fucking as Norman Bates? It was stupid. But anyway, it's the Psycho, the remake. So, and it's just looking pristine quality because it's completely unopened when I bought it. So, yeah, I'll give that a look sometime. This is the first Puppet Master, which has a making of documentary about the making of Puppet Master after the end of the movie. So the first Puppet Master, okay, I got Puppet Master 3 without the cover in Oklahoma. I got Puppet Master 2 over there as well, but this is the only Puppet Master film that I have here. So if I start with the first one, I'm li I like that. I like the first one I find over here is the first one. That's good. I start with the first one, and then I can go from there. So it doesn't matter what order I go now. That, you know, that's kind of nice. Start with the first film in the franchise. It's a movie called Nickel and Dime. This is a screen copy. But this is Nickel and Dime, which has uh, an unlikely odd couple of C. Thomas Howell and Wallace Shawn. I know, really? Wow. <laughs> and I've seen the trailer. It looks like it might be a fun kind of buddy movie, so I'll give it a look sometime. Nickel and Dime. And then we got... One, one, I've been looking forward to seeing this film because I read about it. It sounded like it might be a good movie. John Savage. The role that... You know, I saw the trailer for this too and it looked like it might be good. This is Hunting. And it's like an erotic sex sort of erotic thriller, but, you know, John Savage plays a businessman who basically lives for the thrill of the hunt. He just basically stalks women, you know, and hunts them down and kills them. So, and yeah, that's basically, <laughs> that's hunting. <laughs> He's hunting, you know. And John Savage, I think, no, that's a different actor who played the vampire in Waxwork, if I remember correctly. I don't know who it was. This is Searching for Bobby Fischer. I'm wanting to see this drama. It looked like it might be really good. I'm not a big fan of chess. But the trailer always looked like it had a good cast, and it looked like it might be a good, you know, fun, feel-good movie. Uh, he had Joe Montaigne look like he was bringing his A-game. Same thing for Ben Kingsley and Lawrence, young girl, Lawrence Fishburne. So, and Max Pomeranc, the kid. So I was wanting to give it a look. It's based on a book. It's supposed to be a best-selling book, so searching for Bobby Fischer. Um, this is the... This is another part of the eight for a dollar, the fear. I wanted to give this another, another look. Killer old, no. Hey, it's old Chief Woodenhead. Oh wait, no, it's not. Um, this is the one that's got a pretty good amount of. Uh, I guess his name is Morty. <laughs> the killer's name is Morty. There is even a sequel to the Fear. It's called Halloween Night. So. This sounds like a good idea. The idea of the film sounds interesting. You know, about people experiencing the worst fears, about this group of people trying to go in and try to get over their fears, and something happens. So this is the fear. I remember actually liking the film last time I saw it. So this is a recent find. This is Superstition on VHS. I always wanted to see this film. I always wanted this in VHS. 
I got a funny story about this. I went to the thrift store, and I saw there was another guy there. He's looking at it, and he grabbed it. And I'm like, man, I've been looking for that for a while. And he's like, no, nah, here you go. Have it. You can take it. I'm like, oh yeah. It's like I don't know what it is. My luck is crazy. Like I, I can, I'm not even like I can't even control myself. I'm like, I want that. I wanted that one. It's like here you go. Like yay. So it's kind of an early birthday present, I guess. Superstition. Getting it for two bucks is a good deal. Not expending too much. Although a dollar would be better. Um, this is actually produced by Mario Kassar and Andrew and and Rajna. So it's one of the first films those guys produced. I always had like an interesting idea for a horror film and I never saw it. So the Superstition. That's kind of a badass cover. Really. So this is G.I. Joe the movie. <laughs> the original anime movie with some hilarious ass opening in the beginning with some kids talking about the new celebrity video celebrity videos just for kids and the kids seem like too way too old to be that into into these videos it was so low budget it was hilarious I gotta rip that sometime and show it it's so fucking bad this is G.I. Joe the movie the celebrities just for kids videos just for kids edition and this is Fright Night Part 2. No, I didn't pay five ninety five for it. It's safe for me. <laughs> Just any version of this is nice. The last version I had in Oklahoma. The version I had in Oklahoma didn't even have the box. So the, having the box is a plus. And paying 50 cents for it is even better. So, Fright Night Part 2, classic film. Why is this not on DVD in a re-release in widescreen? Give me a break. This is definitely one of the better sequels out there. Even though I had some issues with it, in the long run, still kicks the shit out of the Fright Night remake, and a lot of any other, a lot of basically any vampire movie in almost the past ten years, Fright Night Part Two kicks the shit out of it. So Fright Night Part Two, underrated sequel, you know, Fifty Cent's good, good to add him on part of my collection. Even though I don't have Fright Night, so now I gotta go try to track down Fright Night again. So this is Fright Night Part Two. Um. This is Sniper, looking brand new and fresh, because uh, it was just right out of the box, out of the packaging. Like, I already, I know I already have a copy of this in Oklahoma, but I'm not getting that back anytime soon. It was a dollar, and I had Sniper too, and I wanted to get Sniper. So, so, so Sniper, it's an underrated film with Tom Berenger and Billy Zane. But I really like Sniper. It's a good action movie. This is Billy Jack, Tom Laughlin's infamous. You know, movie where he kicks the shit out of people who are bullying the Native Americans. Thought I'd give it a shot. Still haven't opened the packaging yet, though. This is the last one that I got at the garage sale, which was part of the deal, which was eight for dollars for eight dollars for one. And this is black top with uh, meatloaf a day. <laughs> meatloaf a day. Give me a break, Kirsten Davis. So it's basically like, um, Meatloaf, I don't think he's playing the villain in this. It's like he's or new trucker. Maybe he's playing the bad guy, but it doesn't really say it. It's like Meatloaf is playing the opposite character he played in, in Black Dog. It's like he's playing the good guy or something. I don't know, but... It, it just seems like freaking Black Dog again, and I wanted to give it another shot. It's even called Black Top. <laughs> I didn't want to give it another shot. And not really another shot. I wanted to give this a shot to see if it was, it's any good. Plus, it's eight dollars. You know, eight movies for dollars. You can't go wrong with that. And then I got this a goodwill recently. Italian Job. Got this again because I saw this in the theater, but when it came out, I really enjoyed it. This is one of Mark Wahlberg's bad better films. He's enjoyable in this. Just like he is in the big hit. Where is this Mark Wahlberg? Where I miss this Mark Wahlberg. You know, this fun Mark Wahlberg, you know. Who was fun to watch. And had fun. Said this depressing, you know. Ooh. Mark Wahlberg. You know, you know Mark Wahlberg who seems like he's just ready to cry. So this is an Italian job. I, find, I think it's an underrated remake. I think it's better than the original. I don't care. I know the original came for Michael Caine. I don't care for it. I think it's actually quite boring. This one is exciting. It's got breakneck pace. It even makes chases with Mini Coopers for fuck's sake exciting. And that's, and that's tough. 
This even has a featurette about the mighty minis of an Italian job at the end. I remember having a good cast. I remember having a good time with this movie. You know? Donald Stoverman was a good villain. Jason Statham, the young Jason Statham, Seth Green was good. I, I just wanted to check it out again. It just popped in my head and I saw it. I was like, cool, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go for the Italian job. That's an Italian job. And then the last VHS I have in this update <laughs> is kind of sad. <laughs> well, it really is sad. Yeah. House of the Dead. It was a quarter, okay? I wanted to see how fucking truly shitty this was. I got this at a garage sale. It was it was 25 cents. I mean, what? Spend 25 cents on a gumball or spend 25 cents on a movie? I'd never spend 25 cents on a movie any day over a gumball or some stupid little sticker. I mean, come on. And I know it's shit. I know it is. If it's shit... I'll, I'll tell it like it is. It gives me... Now I have a tape I can just beat the shit out of with a, with a bat or something, you know? Yeah, House of the Dead. Fucking... Ooey bowl, man. Ugh. So that's it for the VHS. Um, since I'm going for old video formats, I think I'll just go to the Laserdisc and then I'll get to the DVDs. And I got some few little special things to show you guys after that. I know I already showed a Blaze Racer Robocop before, but this is the one that I wanted anyway. The other one, I didn't really, that's not the one I was looking for. This is Robocop, is a Criterion Collection Edition. This is the one that has features on it. Not very many, but this is the one that has X rating, the unrated director's cut, has an audio commentary, Paul Verhoeven, Hoven, Edna Ryer, John Davison, and Paul Salmon, which is probably on the DVD. Film the storyboard comparison, extensive still frame supplement chronicling the production of Robocop, but no documentaries or anything. But it's still like the best version of Robocop. And I'm, I'm going to keep the other version just so it, you know, I can watch the version, you know, because, you know, because the other version just one side. You know, this one has, has, I have to, two discs to watch the movie. The other one's like one disc. It's just, it's just easier to deal with. So anyway, this is. So what the fold out looks like. Got Robo, you got some you know, cool stuff here. So this is the Criterion Edition of Robocop on Laserdisc. Um, then we got... <laughs> this is the uh, Special Collector's Edition of Nightmare on Elm Street. Now I don't know if I showed these already. I don't think I did. I think I only showed that on a personal little update, uh, Rainbow Raft. Um, and if I did, so what? Don't care. I'm showing it again because I showed Freddy's dead, and well, this is what the so this is what the cover you know this is what the this is what it looks like the that fuck insert is that the name for it? Um, so yeah, this one has features on it. You know, this one has digital widescreen transfer, you know, the extra trailer for all the upstream films, commentaries, 30 minutes of lead scenes. So this is not Renault Street. The special collectors are using a red and green version. It's just so, so really cool, man. Damn it. Quit it. Stop being so blurry. What the hell? There we go. Anyways, you know, not Renault Street. The ultimate version on Laserdisc out there. Anyway. Um, and I think I already showed it before on an update. And if I did, sue me. I don't really care. I'm just stay with it. <laughs> this is not why it's hard to watch, you know, not watching the whole video. Yeah. Um, this is not Roll Street Part 2 Freddy's Revenge. This is the Elite Advisor Letterbox Edition. I really, that's some badass cover art, really. Some really good cover art. Um, there were only, Elite only released three Nightmare on Elm Street films on, on Laserdisc. The first one, and the second one, and the third film. And this doesn't have any features, it just has the trailer and a widescreen format release. And this awesome cover art. I mean, that's just awesome. It's really cool. It's a work of art in itself. So... 
So I don't see now. Now I'm going to show you my Nemeral Street 3 laser disc, but this is like the early, the earlier release, which is not even widescreen, not even you know. The elite version looks really cool, but um, well, one opportunity, a couple opportunities I've had to might snag a copy. I got a bid like way too high, became way too expensive. This is Nemeral Street Part Three Dream Warrior, so this is the seen better days. It's in pretty shoddy condition. But the disc works. And it came with a bid that included part three, four, and five. So could really turn that down to get all of those all at once. This is number three part four, speaking of that, number three part four the Dream Master. Um, underrated fun, underrated sequel. Well, this isn't in the widescreen either, but still, number three part four. Um, this is Nightmare 5. This is the unrated version, which I don't think is still not on DVD for some reason. Uh, this is the unrated version on Laserdisc with the stupid music videos as well. You know, the hoodie. You know, anyway, I got to swing it music video, Dream Child. It came with the bid, eBay bid, so for parts 3, 4, and 5. So, I could really complain. Um, this is New Nightmare, so now I, I have officially have all the Nightmare on Elm Street films on Laserdisc, and I think I already talked about it, but if I didn't, cool, if I did, so what? There we go. That's all the Nightmare on Elm Street films. Um, now I got, now I'm going to get into ones I definitely did not show you yet, like... this. <laughs> My DVD's in Oklahoma, so I just made it one of those quick bids, like not expecting I'd win it, but I got it. And I can't say, you know, I'm disappointed. I can't say I'm glad I didn't. I'm glad I really did. Just this freaking all this night of the creeps. And it's in pretty stellar condition. And uh, it's just that's that cover art kicks the shit out of the DVD cover art, right? You know, the good news is your date is here. The bad news is he's dead. So this is now the Creeps classic movie, man. Great film. This is a movie called The Reflecting Skin. That was on a list of that online that Matt and I were looking at one night in Skype. One of the weirdest movies. And this is sort of a vampire flick. But in some ways it's not. I don't know how to explain it. They said it reminds some people are saying it reminds them of Blue Velvet and David Lynch, but they think it's better. And the trailer looked really interesting and absurd and weird, and it looked right up my alley. So and it's not on DVD, it's more of a remember. So I wanted to give this a look and see what the reflecting skin is all about. I mean, and, and speaking of weird, just that cover is weird too. But look at this! What the hell is that thing they're holding? Is that some white see-through? Clear a cell, baby? I don't know what the hell that is. But this is the reflecting skin on laser disc. This came with a bid that came with not only this film, but also these two films as well. So, and that these two films I don't have on VHS or DVD over here. And the film is Cameron's Closet. I like this film a lot. I really do. I'm a big fan of Cameron's Closet. Um, I think it's underrated. Um, the cover could not really that great. I think Carter Smith had, has a really underrated performance. I think the kid does a great job. Um, I'm taking this plastic off because I don't need it. I really don't. I've always enjoyed Cameron's Closet. The first time I rented it from Hollywood Video, it always captivated me. It's definitely, in my opinion, one of the more underrated horror films out there. I mean, I made a freaking tribute to it with its somber strata of area, so... And then, you know, I like a movie when it's like that. It's based on a novel by Gary Bradner. Gary wrote The Howling. So this is Cameron's Closet. And I got all these movies for 10 bucks. So I got Cameron's Closet, as well as... Another film that I've been curious about seeing... I never got around to it, and I think I have the VHS in Oklahoma, but no, honestly, the laser disc is better, <laughs> better quality, and 
and everything. This is a, uh, and this one's on DVD. It's getting getting pretty hard to find. One of those increasingly getting close to be out of out of print MGM releases. This is I Madman. I still got some plastic on the top here. I need to get rid of. I don't need to, but all the other plastic is gone. I don't need a little bit of plastic on top. This is I Mad Man. And this is directed by Tiber Takax. Ta Ta I don't know, I don't think that's how you pronounce it. The guy who directed The Gate. It's got Clayton Warner in it. And I like Clayton, Clayton Warner, you know, from the Destroyer. From, from Destroyer. And then I've always liked Creighton Rohner, so I've always liked him. He was really, he's good. He was even good in, I think it was the Nights of Assassin's Evil, I think. And it's a different actor I'm thinking of. I think it's a different actor I'm thinking of. Yeah, it's a different actor. So it's got, it's got Jamie Wright in it. And it looked like a good idea. There was this book, this girl reading, and the killer comes to life. So, yeah, I'm Madman. A horror film that not very many people really talk about that much. Same thing with Cameron's Closet. And this is the remastered version of Chud. Um, I'm taking the plastic off here. Image of a team with such Star Trek RG Regal home video release, but this is still Chud on Laserdisc. And I like Chud. Wanted to give it another look. This is Chud on Laserdisc. Cannibalistic humanoid underground dwellers. This is remastered. Um, it's still not white screen. This Laserdisc, but it's digitally remastered though. This is the this is the last version of the film that was released. Is this digitally remastered version of Chud by Image Entertainment? So yeah, so this is Chud. I believe this is the digitally remastered version anyway. Even though all they say is 1984, I seriously doubt this is from 1984. This laser disc, <laughs> no. It's not. This is the remaster version of Chud. So, from Image Entertainment. So, this is Laser for Chud. Have fun with it. It's a good film. Good one. Good performances. Dennis Turner's fun. So, I got all three of those Chud, Cameron's Closet, and I Mad Man for 10 bucks. Here, I think this is one of the few old school horror films, really old school horror films that I. That I can really, that I really enjoy. This is the haunting, scary fucking movie. Still scary to this day. It's about the stuff you don't see, which scares you more than anything in this film. And uh, this is basically the DVD that was released. That is getting pretty hard to find, but this is on Laserdisc. So it's a widescreen. It's a letterbox format. It's got a trailer on it. So. It doesn't have the commentary that the DVD does, but it's still The Haunting. It's a classic horror film. Robert Wise directed it. The same guy. One of his most, one of the films he's most famous for is this film, The Haunting. Hard to believe the same guy directed Star Trek The Motion Picture directed a movie like this, right? So you have The Haunting, and then you have this. Now, I got this, and I only made a bid because I didn't think I was going to win it. Now... This 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 is a laser disc of Maniac. Yes, Maniac, that Maniac with that pitch space love of a man. Joe Spinell. This is a director's cut by Elite Entertainment, the one with the white screen format, with trailers and television spots and foreign trailers and promotional footage for Maniac Two, and a deleted scene. So basically, I got this. And it's actually autographed by Joe Spinell. That's actually autographed by William Lustig. Not Joe Spinell. William Lustig, the director of Maniac and other films like... I think he directed... That's William Malone who directed <laughs> fucking Creature. So William Lustig has directed other movies that I just honestly can't think of for the time being. But he's most famous, pretty much probably most famous for this film, Maniac. It's autographed by William Lustig. Now I was going to say to Mike, it says, To Laser World... My favorite store, William Lustig. And you would not believe how much I got this for. I made a bid, and the opening bid was like, I think it was like five ninety nine or something. So, I got this for less than 10 bucks. 
the Laserdisc and Maniac, the Director's Cut, um, Letterbox, Widescreen, and it's autographed by William Lustig, the director. I think it's pretty cool. I gotta be honest. I'm not the biggest fan of this film. I don't hate it, but I can't turn down a chance to own, you know, something like that. An autographed copy, you know, of Maniac by the director, William Lustig. I mean, that's that's, that's pretty cool. Oh, yeah, William Lustig, he directed Maniac Cop. You know, did Maniac Cop, Maniac Cop 2, right? I mean, didn't he direct Maniac Cop 3? Or is it a different guy? But I know he directed Maniac Cop, so... That's, a, that's another movie he's famous for, Maniac Cop. There's a few others. Can't really think of them right now. But yeah, that's that's Maniac. Autographed by William Lustig. That's mainly the reason why I've made a bid on it. I wasn't even thinking I was going to win it. Because I'm like, oh, well, if it's autographed, I don't have no chance of winning that. I'm going to get up and hit the ass for that. But I didn't. I won it. The autographed laser disc of Maniac. It's not in the best of shape, but I didn't care. I made a bit on it because it's one of my all-time favorite movies, The Monster Squad. So this is the latest of The Monster Squad. It's not even widescreen, but it's image entertainment, so the quality's probably gonna be pretty good. But I love this movie. You know, I couldn't complete my latest collection without getting a copy of this. It's one of my all-time favorite films. You know, I got the blob on laser disc. You know. Might as well have the Monster Squad on LaserDisc as well. Um, so that's the Monster Squad. Um, this is Friday the 13th on LaserDisc. Um, widescreen. It's not even the widescreen. They didn't release any Friday the 13th films on widescreen, if I remember correctly. Not even Jason Goes to Hell. So all the Friday the 13th films on LaserDisc are kind of not even, not even really honestly that great quality. But, you know, it, it's nice to have an opportunity to own you know, the franchise on Laserdisc for, you know, just collector's purposes. And I decided to start with the first film because it was the first, you know, because I saw it, this guy was selling it for pretty cheap and I made a bid on it and I won. So now I got m more parts, but these are really hard to find. These Friday, thir these Friday 13 Laserdisc are hard to find. So to start off with the first one, cool. So I'm not starting off with my collection with part five the new beginning so this is Friday 13th on Laserdisc it, it, it's still pretty fucking cool even though this is not my favorite in the franchise that's still pretty awesome so um I also have right here this is Bat 21 this film's on DVD but this Laserdisc is a special edition that has features on it that the DVD does not have for some reason this has an audio commentary by the director um the director of the film, who's Peter Markle, it has an audio commentator by Peter Markle, and it has a theatrical trailer at the end of the of the, and it's also all in one disc, so it's like a DVD, and it also has a behind the scenes video. So there's a little feature right at the end. So this laser disc alone is more features than the DVD of Bad Twenty One. Which is kind of a crying shame. This is this is a pretty underrated film. Good for great performances by Gene Hackman and Danny Glover. I feel it's pretty underrated. Not very many people talk about this film. Yeah, it's a commentary by director Peter Markle and director of photography Mark Irwin. So, yeah, Bat 21 on Laserdisc. Uh, then we have the light screen edition of The Emerald Forest. Another underrated film, I think. John Borman. One of his less, you know, whacked out movies, that's for sure. Uh, <laughs> um, it's like a more serious version, if you, if you, if you, you know, of maybe a Jungle to Jungle, <laughs> Emerald Forest. I, I really liked Emerald Forest. Last time I saw it, I thought the, I literally just thought the, it was a good idea. This guy's kid got lost in the forest and became like a jungle you know, Jungle Kid. Um, every all the shots are done on location. It's stunningly beautiful at points. The score is really good. Yeah, I like that with Forest. I haven't seen it in a while, but this is this is the this is the widescreen version. So, Emerald Forest. Um, I still don't know why this is not on DVD, but this is Prison. 
which is Horror Has a New Home, which is an insanely underrated horror film, in my opinion. Um, directed by Rainy Harlan. Um, it was produced, I think it was actually released on video before Nightmare 4 was getting produced. Uh, Nightmare, Rainy Harlan got the job to direct Nightmare 4 after, you know, they saw the screen. I think the directors or the producers of Nightmare 4 saw Prison and were impressed by the results, so they asked Rainy to do Nightmare 4. So, this is one of Rennie Harlan's first films. He does a great job here. Um, I don't know why it's not on a DVD. I especially don't understand why it's not on a DVD since, you know, Viggo Mortensen is in this and has one of his early roles as a lead. This, I don't know why they didn't release it, you know, on DVD, you know, around the same time, you know, the Lord of the Rings craze is going on. But anyway, I'm glad to have it on Laserdisc. Uh, Image Entertainment does a good job with their transfers. It's in full screen, but they do a good job with their quality. So this is probably the closest, the best quality we, you can get. Unless there's like an on-demand version of Prison and widescreen. But anyway, Prison is a great movie. I'm, I'm not even, I'm just going to say it's a great film. It's in the Pangoria 101 unheralded movies list. And it's in there for a reason. Some great kills. Like that barbed wire kill there. Um, yeah, I, I like Prison a lot, actually. So, yeah, Prison... Um, that's how you do a fucking prison film. <laughs> um, even though it's not like it's supposed to be anything like Lockout. And I know I keep mentioning Lockout because Lockout's so disappointing. But that's how you do a prison movie. This is Tales from the Hood. <laughs> yeah, look at that reflectiveness. Chill. Or be chilled. I was like this reflectiveness. And this is actually has a commentary on it by Rusty Condeff. Um... I like this film a lot. This is an underrated uh, film, in my opinion. It catches some tales in the crypt, in a way, but it's a very solid horror anthology. Um, yes, it looks like it might be just gimmicky. It might be just some, you know, urban version of tales in the crypt, and in a way, it is that. But it's got some great effects. It's got some really good storylines. It's got some great, good acting. It's got a really underrated score by Christopher Young. Just a solid film that, you know, it's getting harder to find on DVD anyway. So, but, yeah, Tales from the Hood, who doesn't love that cover? That's just cool, right? It's just chill. It's just, this, yeah, it's just chilled and awesomeness. So that's Tales from the Hood. Um, this is Deep Rising. I love this movie. This is great, great movie. This is still, in my opinion, Stephen Summers' best film. Even though I like The Mummy... I don't mind the movie returns. Deep Rising is better than both of them. They're right here. It's a slick, entertaining action film. This is also on Fan Career's 101 and Herald of Horror Films list. Treat Williams. This, in my opinion, is my favorite Treat Williams film. He's a fun lead in this, and it's kind of sad that he didn't get that much. Uh, this doesn't have any features or anything, but, you know, it is the movie in widescreen and on Laserdisc. It's just great stuff, this movie. Great action, great humor, great early effects, good idea, you know, good one-liners. Like, what are you looking at? I mean, the climax alone is epic. You know, those jet ski, you know, through the, through the ship. Um, I guess to say, Die Hard meets Alien meets Titanic. The Hog Reporter says, "Yeah, I don't, I don't see the Alien reference. I don't get the Titanic reference, but okay." Deep Rising. It's an underrated film. Great movie. You know, if you ever get a chance, check it out. And I'm surprised that my music video I did for it is getting... That's one of my, one of my most watched videos, is that video. So, yeah, a lot of... And then and then the trailer for Deep Rising gets everybody talking about... It. Like, every... I get comments almost every day of the trailer for Deep Rising. And a lot of them are like, this movie's good. Or some people's bashing it, and then someone's defending it. And I'll get one, like, someone saying, like, Oh, yeah, this is the movie where the chick gets pulled down in the toilet... Man, I was scared for toilets for weeks and I never for months and I didn't know what movie it was. <laughs> so that's Deep Rising. Yeah, a chick gets pulled down and pulls her pants down and gets uh, sucked into a toilet in this movie. But Family Genesis is actually really good in this too. Just all around a great fun movie, Deep Rising. So I was glad to get that. Um This This Laser's a popcorn, seen better days. 
Um, but it's still popcorn. I love that tagline. I like the cover art. Buy a bag. Go home in a box. So, this is a fun movie. This is like a homage to the horror films of the 50s and also blending it in with, you know, modern day stuff like Nightmare on Elm Street. Popcorn is a lot of fun. And this is also, I think, on the Fangoria list as well. If it's not, it should be. Fun movie. It's on DVD, so... But I haven't been able to find that, so... Pick up the Laserdisc. We got the Night Flyer. Wide screen. Got this for pretty cheap. I guess this one's getting kind of hard to find. The DVD's not easy to find either, if I remember correctly. Right now. Um, but... I had fun with this movie. Miguel Ferrer has a good, does a good job. The makeup effects are good. Yes, the ending's downbeat, but so was a short story, so I'm not surprised. But I thought Miguel Ferrer's performance alone, even though he's kind of a dick in this film, but he was sort of a likable dick. But good movie, good solid flick. You know, get some flack so that I don't understand, but that's Night Flyer. I think Stephen King has admitted that's one of the few films that are close to his vision that he likes of his stories. Um, here's this awesomeness here. We got 10th anniversary edition of Reanimator. That cover art is just badass. It really is. So I don't know if I showed it to you already. I don't really care if I did. I'm showing it to you again. Death is just the beginning. And uh, you basically have, you have this, of course you have, you open up the insert, you get this awesomeness, Herbert West there with his reanimation serum. It's basically, it's got ram remastered widescreen version, it's got audio two audio commentary tracks by Stuart Gordon, Brian Yesner, and the, and the original cast. And I think the commentary that got copied onto the DVD. And it's got 20 minutes of additional R-rated footage. Including the never before seen dream sequence, and it's got the Chadwick Trail and television spots. So basically, the reanimator, you know, it doesn't have all the features that the special edition DVD does, but it's still the best version of the film to own on Laserdisc. And, and I really do like reanimator. The first time I saw it, I got the DVD, you know, the two disc that I still have in Oklahoma that I got a ridiculously good deal for it, a pawn shop. And I got it, and I brought it with me when we were going to, when I was going on the road with my dad, and I saw it, and I really liked it, and I really, I really do enjoy Reanimator. So it's it's a really good blend of comedy and horror. So, yeah, Stuart Gordon knocked it out of the park with Reanimator, and it's just that cover, it's just, just awesome. It's really fucking awesome, really. So you have that. And then we have, uh, this is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. This is the Elite Edition. This is Texas Chainsaw Massacre Elite High Def White Screen Transfer. This is the best version of Texas Chainsaw Massacre on a laser disc. Um, this, this, this has some weight to it, this set. Um, it took some care with this one. It's got the new widescreen transfer, supervised by director Toby Hooper, uh, new stereo surround remix, supervised by Toby Hooper. Um, it's got an audio commentary with Toby Hooper on it. It's got, you know, it's got an audio commentary with Toby Hooper, the director of photography, Daniel Pearl, and Gunnar Hansen, which I think a commentary might be on another DVD. Um, it's approximately 30 minutes of lead scenes and outtakes. Blue blue for real, original theatrical trailers and television spot spots. Trailers for other films in the Chainsaw series, still photos, posters, and collectibles. I like some of the quotes on the back of this laser disc. Last time this film looked this good, I was looking through my viewfinder, director Toby Hooper. So, and this is a good review from John Michael Goodwin from The Village Voice. Chainsaw captures the syntax and structure of a nightmare, a nightmare with astonishing fidelity. What makes Chainsaw interesting is that since we are watching it with our eyes open, it's a nightmare from which we can't wake up. So now, Texas Chainsaw Massacre is a film that I haven't seen that much, and but I really always I always wanted this 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 laser disc, not only because I had gotten part two and three before it needed to complete the collection. But just because this is like another one of those holy grail ultimate 
you know, laser discs for horror, you know, collectors. And uh, you know, big horror fan, so no, yeah, this is this is Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the laser disc, uh, elite high definition super scan transfer, letterbox collector's edition. So we got Texas Chainsaw Massacre there, and then we also got the sequel. Which is another awesome bit of cover art here. I think this is used as the album cover art, if I remember correctly. If it wasn't, it should have been. This is Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part Two. This is a letterbox edition. Um, MGM did a good job with the DVD with the special edition and everything, but man, you could you should have used this cover art. I mean, this is just awesome. This looks like a metal album or something, right? I mean, this is this is awesome. Uh, I mean, that's just just look at that. This is just really fucking cool. So anyway, Jason Chainsaw Massacre Two is an underrated film anyway, in my opinion. And for the longest time until the MGM release, this is like one of the best versions to get. And basically it's like a DVD, you have side one and two, and then at the end of side two you have the trailer, you have a couple of deleted scenes. Now you don't have a com yeah, but you don't have a commentary or anything. But you know, it's okay, you know. Basically, but you know, this is no takes to change so much of our two, and I just, I just love that cover art. That's one of the coolest things about Laserdisc is stuff like this. You know, it's just, just, just looking at this cover art is just awesome. It's just having the Laserdisc itself, just in terms of the artwork, is worth it. So that's takes to change so much of our two. Um, now we also got Leatherface, which is a genius of Massacre Three, and I think I already showed this, but I did care, but this is Texas Chainsaw, the other face Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. This is the uncut version. So this is pretty much the DVD minus some of the features. Um, but pretty much probably the same features. This just doesn't have the original version. This has the widescreen transfer of the unrated European version. It has two commentaries that are on the DVD as well. but And then it has some storyboards and then it has the Leatherface comic book. And then to some deleted scenes. But I haven't seen this one in a while, so I'm only give her a shot. I like the teaser trailer, but you know, I got this one for dirt poor cheap. That's why. I mean I got this thing for like fifteen bucks. And that's pretty cheap for this one, because usually this is one of the harder one of Texas Chainsaw films to find and laser disc. So yes, return of this Texas Chainsaw Massacre in you know, you know, the return is that what it's called? The Return? Or what the fuck? I don't even remember what the fuck it's called. It's just a shitty movie. Part 4. You know, the Leatherface and Drag. Takes a Chainsaw Massacre, A New Generation. That one is on Laserdisc in Japan, but I don't really care. And I don't need it on Laserdisc, because that movie sucks. I don't even want it on, on DVD. So, yeah. And then we have... Um, this is... I got this brand new... Or I couldn't believe it. I think I got it for like 15 bucks, 16 bucks, brand new on Laserdisc. This is Day of the Dead. This is the special edition of Day of the Dead. Now, I really do like this film. It's underrated in my opinion. Bob looks really nice there. This is the Elite version, digitally remastered. And it's got, um, it's got basically the movie on, you know, one disc. But it's also got features. Um, it's got side two. It's got one, but it's also got another disc, which is just one disc that's just a video journal of Day of the Dead. Now, I don't know if that's on DVD or not, but if it's on one side of one disc, that means it must be pretty freaking, must be pretty big. It has a lot of footage in it. Um, after the movie ends, so you get behind the scenes, another behind the scenes little clip, and then you get the actual trailer, and then you get the video journal of Day of the Dead on, the, on the, you know, disc two. So this is Day of the Dead um, on Laserdisc. One of the better sequels out there and some absolutely mind-blowing effects by Tom Savini. He should have won, like, he should have at least been nominated. Was he even nominated for Best Makeup Effects for Day of the Dead when it came out? It's a crying shame if he wasn't. So we're almost done with the Laserdiscs. So we're getting close. Um... Now I'm doing the Laserdisc box sets. Now I don't know if I showed this already. 
if I did, you know, sorry. This is Criterion Collection in Brazil. You know, I don't mind this movie. In fact, I do like the Love Conquers All ending. The happy ending, so to speak. It's got a documentary on it. It's got a video history. It's got the Love Conquers All version. The version that I actually like. And it's got you know, some other stuff as well. And I also have a book that goes with this. That's companion with this laser disc. And... This is basically like the ultimate version of Brazil. There's also a DVD, Criterion Collection DVD of Brazil, which is basically the same thing. But, you know, it's just the Laserdisc is something just so, so different, you know, in my opinion. It's so, just so cool. So this is Brazil. And I got this in the book for like, I think like 10 bucks. So that was pretty good. Um, this is, these next two ones, these are the last Laserdisc I'm gonna show. And I got, just before I show them though, I'm gonna tell you about some ones that have won. I'm waiting for the mail. I'm waiting for Navy Seals. I'm waiting for, that's the one I'm waiting for. I'm waiting for Jack's Back and I'm waiting for the Island, which I got for like a discounted price. Like for less than seven bucks, I got the Island, which isn't even on, is, is not even on DVD. So this is another one of the Holy Grails for Laser Disc Collectors. And I got this for yeah, I got it for 20 bucks, I think. And this is Dawn of the Dead. This is this widescreen director's cut. This is the version of Dawn of the Dead that has the commentary track that is not on the box set DVD. You know, the other DVD that, that I got for Christmas that I, I might have probably showed you before. This one has a new transfer. This is basically like the ultimate version of Dawn of the Dead to have on Laserdisc. Simplistic cover, but badass all the same. Um, it's got the outer commentary by Giorgio Romero, assistant director Christine Romero, and Tom Savini, which is, I guess, is not available on any DVD format, which is too bad. It's got, it's an extended version, which contains 15 minutes of additional footage not contained in a theatrical release. It's got television spots, it's got a radio spot, it's got two alternate scenes from Dario Argento's Zombie shooting script. It's got the shooting script containing the original suicide ending. It's got behind the scenes, photos and production stills, posters and collectibles and fan testimonials. So this is actually by Anchor Bay. This is this is released through Anchor Bay and Elite Entertainment. What is it? Dawn of the Dead laser disc. Now you see the awesome back there, you know, the dead of the dead. You know, that you see the back so you see the back of the you see the zombie staring at you. I mean that's pretty awesome, right? It was so awesome that my webcam started blurring up. So there we go. Um, it comes with this little, little, this thing right here. Little sheet there. It talks a little bit about it. It talks about, you know, all that. Some coolness. So this is Dawn of the Dead. So I don't have Night of the Living Dead. I'm trying to get that one. I'm trying to get the remake too. Laser Jace, that's a little bit hard. That's a little bit rarer and more expensive. But I can get the first one pretty affordably, and I probably will get it just to complete the collection. Even though I don't really like the first one that much, yeah, sue me. I, I'm I'm more into Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead. But yeah, this is Dawn of the Dead, the laser disc, which is pretty awesome, right? And then I could not believe it when I won this. I can't believe it. I still can't believe it. It's unbelievable. I can't believe that I won this for as cheap as I won it for. Another twenty buck Sunday special thing on eBay. All I gotta say is, if you guys are bidding on stuff on eBay, keep an eye out for stuff that ends on e on Sunday, because it seems like people don't seem to really honestly keep their eyes open on Sunday that much. Get some really good deals. This is this this is what I'm gonna show you is limited out of twenty five hundred. There are only twenty five hundred of these that have been made, and I currently own. I think there's a number on here somewhere. I could have sworn I saw a number on it. I saw a number on this somewhere. Um. And yeah, there's 2,500. This is number 317 out of 2,500. And this is the signature series. Laser disc of Phantasm. I don't even know if that's the right 
theme, but Phantasm. Isn't that awesome? The ball. Uh, look at that. It's awesome. And here's the more even awesome thing. This is number 317, 2500. And these are autographed by Don Coscarelli and Angus Grimm. And those are real autographs. Those are not fake autographs. Those are real autographs. So, actually autographed, personally signed by Don Coscarelli and Angus Grimm. I mean, ah, this is just like unbelievable. Like, this is so awesome. I mean, how can you not love owning something like that? I mean, if you're a Phantasm fan, you gotta own this just for the autographs alone. And uh, this is like an ultimate horror. This is like the last big horror laser disc that I wanted to complete my collection. Now, I would like to get Phantasm 2 and 3, but none of them I'm like really jumping up and down and being like, yeah, I need to spend them. I need to buy them now. This is like the last one. This is like the last piece. I got it. And it's like in stellar shape. Look how great this looks. I, mean, I don't see any issues with this. So, maybe some stuff on the side, maybe, but it's got some wear. But anyway, you, you open it up like this. Oh, it's a box that you actually open up. Let me look at that. This is. <laughs> Ooh. Don't you wish you had the Phantasm laser disc like me? Okay, sorry. This is a phantasm. It's just so simplistic and badass. Um, and right here, this is the ultimate version of the film on Laserdisc. Period. All the other versions are not even remotely close. They're not even widescreen or anything. Um, there's that little cool little inserts here. Then we have the film is on. Well, the film is on uh, one disc. But side the other disc is just features, a shit ton features. It's got a sub, it's got a Fangoria TV commercial. It's got an interview from 1979, a two-part interview. It's got an Australian TV promo from Phantasm. Footage from Angus Grimm at a Fangorian convention and deleted scenes. Now on the back of side, the disc two side four, it's got the actual trailer. Analog track. It's got the echo trailer. The analog track has the radio spots. It's got a 60 second TV spot. It's got a 30 second TV spot. It's got a number 30 second TV spot. It's got home video, home movies, and analog tracks. Is the disco version of the Phantasm theme is on the analog track. <laughs> wow. Analog track sitting here at midnight. Long version produced by Pill Thorn Bory. Um, still frame archives. And it also has the Japanese novelization on the freaking la What? I can read the laser I can read the novelization of Phantasm on the freaking laser disc? That's like it's insane. Wow. So that that's really cool. But it doesn't stop there. That's what I really like about these special limited edition box sets. They really do mean they they take their time with it. And then you have stuff like this. Soundtrack to Phantasm. Yeah. On open. It's called a gold CD. It's got 17 tracks. So. Yeah. So it's Phantasm. The Phantasm soundtrack. So you get not only the movie. Phantasm. Plus a ton of special features. You also get the soundtrack. Which this is like the Jaws box set, which you get the movie and you get a book and you also get the soundtrack. So this is Phantasm. Probably, this is just so awesome. Just unbelievably cool. Phantasm. With autographs by Angus Grimm and Don Coscarelli. So yeah, that's Phantasm. So now, I mean, it's like anything I show you after this is not going to be nearly as badass, but okay, we'll do it anyway. We got some DVDs here. We got Eye of the Eagle, which is not on DVD. Um, I mean, it's not. I'm holding a DVD. Ow! I deserve that. It's on DVD. It's hard to find. It's a hard to find DVD. I got it for pretty cheap. It's like a Concord New Horizons action flick. So Eye of the Eagle. Got this at some thrift store that I went downtown downtown down Vancouver for. This is Witch House. This is a limited edition. Which really doesn't even have that much limited about it. it. Just has the movie. 
But these are kind of, these are pretty hard to find, these Full Moon DVDs anyway. Got it for pretty cheap. And this is Witch House 2, Blood Coven, which has like a shit ton of features. This has this time, this is running time of this DVD is like over three hours. It has the direct, the extended director's cut of Witch House to you. It's got a director and cast commentary track. It's got a spelling rumors feature. It's got two music videos, something called Bucharest or Bust feature. It's got 15 years and 15 minutes feature. An introduction to the DVD of director spotlight of J.R. Brooke Walter. And a film filmography trailer reel with commentary. Let's get a shit ton of features on Witch House 2 Blood Coven, but we can't get a DVD of Moontrap at all. Wow. I believe I've already shown these, but I'll show them again anyway. Unhinged. Matt was warning me about this movie, that this one was a pile of shit. It's got a comedy uh, kind of commentary though on it. Uh, might be funny to listen to. Death Machine on Laserdisc, Confused and Fear, underrated movie. Um, Hurt Locker, great film. Jeremy Renner should have won Best pick, best Actor as well. Saw us in the theater. Very powerful movie. Very powerful film. I'm going to review it again sometime. Hope and probably won't have any pictures just to, just to please Summit so I don't get my review blocked again. This is Fanboys. Want to give it a shot? I remember liking the film okay. You know, Jay Bruchel was fun. The cast was fun. Um, Dan Fogler was great. Some of the cameos were really good. I remember being kind of dep needlessly depressing though at points. But this is fanboys. Um, this is the all the five of the prophecy films. Christopher Walken. Even though Christopher Walken only stars in the first three. But yeah, this is all five prophecy films. Pretty cheap. This is Dark Shadows, a revival series with Ben, ben Cross. I wanted to give it a look because I like Ben Cross. Um, yeah, this is a revival series, revival series from the 80s that didn't last very long. Uh, this is Special Edition of Carrie with the feet with you know pretty good amount of features on it. It's classic. Um, this is the Collector's Edition of Cheech and Chong's Up in Smoke with features. Got commentaries and that behind the future, behind the scenes stuff, and it's a fun movie. Um, this is Exo Squad, season one. I didn't, I didn't think season two was on DVD. I remember the show. I remember being way ahead of its time with the storylines. They weren't just for kids. Adults would really get it. You could really get into them as an adult. And I used to have some of the toys, so I was willing to give it a look. Exo Squad. And then we got, still got some more here. Um, we got Sledgehammer, season one. David Ryan. This, these old Anchor Bay releases are the best. You should, you're just better off getting these old Anchor Bay releases if you're a fan of the show, if you want to check it out. Because this one, these are the ones that have the features. They have a, a documentary with interviews with the cast. It has an inner pilot episode. It has TV spots. It has original TV bumper. It has, you know... All kinds of stuff. And I've always been curious about the show because it looked like a lot of fun. And I got this for 20 bucks at buybacks. And uh, this also comes with this cool little booklet here. Anchor Bay went all out with this. It really did some cool stuff here. Fun little stuff about Sledgehammer. I know. <laughs> like stuff. New time, Sledgehammer, dangerous, off the street and on. Friday at 9 o'clock, Sledgehammer. He plays hardball, but he doesn't shower with other men. <laughs> Fighting crime is its own reward, Sledgehammer. Sledgehammer, 9 o'clock, Elvis lives. Elvis impersonators die. <laughs> Sledgehammer. So Sledgehammer is like, and then you have this really cool thing. It's like a police report thing, but it's like basically a little booklet that... It's like a police report. You open up like this, and it has all these behind the scenes little info, and funny pictures, and, and cool stuff. It talks about the show, and its creation, creation of the show, and everything. And, you know? They actually, Anchor Bay knocked that out of the park with this. This is when Anchor Bay was cool, man. This was when Anchor Bay didn't sell out, and got bought out by stars, and started making shit. Okay? Because the re-release version of the show, that has both seasons in it, 
by Echo Pigeon Entertainment or whoever the hell it is. It doesn't have any of the features and the aspect ratio, if I remember correctly, from what people were saying isn't even right. This is a sledgehammer, and I'm definitely gonna give this watch some time. This is when Anchor Bay knew what the hell they were doing and actually cared. Now, speaking of Anchor Bay, this is another example of what they were doing, they used to do. Sweet William Camp Survival Kit. This includes all three Superboy Camp films and this kind of weird, kind of corny little box, but it's kind of a clever idea, the survival kit. Superboy Camp. I'm not the biggest fan of the first film. I can understand why people like it. Um, Superboy Camp 2. I like this film a lot better. Um, Superboy Camp 3. This box set is getting harder to find, so I thought I'd get it now. Chance. Superboy Camp 3 is decent. Then you have the Camp Diary, which is why Anchor Bay knew was taken. Yeah, Anchor Bay actually cared, man. Little kind of production booklet type, you know, thing about Superboy Camp, you know. And sequels, talking about the Survivor. And then speaking of the Survivor, here is an extra DVD. This is the production footage from them finished Superboy Camp Four: The Survivor, which is only available in this set. Not available anywhere else. So that's Sweet Boy Camp, the survival kit. I think I got it for like thirty-five bucks, which you're probably like, oh, it's kind of pricey, but I'm thinking, you know, considering buying all three of these would probably be ten bucks each. If they were some, you know, would probably be thirty dollars anyway plus tax. It probably would be thirty-five bucks anyway. So survival kit. It's really cool cotton little. And look, Anchor Bay was cool. Anchor Bay actually cared and actually did cool stuff like this. They're like, but you don't have Return to Sleep Boy Camp. I don't want fucking Return to Sleep Boy Camp. I had that movie just returned up my ass because it's where it belongs. This is the Mighty Ducks films. It was ten bucks. Ten bucks for all three. I was like, yeah, yeah I'm doing that. I love this movie. I love the first two actually. I grew up with these movies. Doing, doing do some reviews sometime. Uh, it's gonna be interesting to see them in widescreen because I've always seen them in full screen on VHS. <laughs> this D two Mighty Ducks this is my favorite Mighty Ducks film. Um, these films don't have any features for some reason, even though they were big hits, especially the first film. Come on, Disney. This is D three Mighty Ducks. Which I can honestly consider sort of an underrated sequel because I remember not liking it as much as a kid because the rest of us doesn't know that much. But watching it again a while ago, I, I kind of had a newfound respect for it. So I'll probably check it out again. Basically, all three of these are pretty good. Are really actually pretty really solid kids films. In my opinion, the, some of the best hockey films out there, some of the better sports films out there, is the Mighty Ducks. So yeah, kind of cheer you know pick me up type movies you know after being, you know, unjustly fired. So this is a airport, all four of the movies, all four airport films, might probably do a review series sometime on all four of these movies. This has got airport, and airport 1975, and airport 77, and airport 79, you know, the Concorde and its ridiculousness. So this is all four of them. And that was like 10 bucks for all four. So I was like, $10 for four movies is a really bad deal. This is Trick or Treat, horror anthology that my friend Matt's been talking about as being one of the really good, and I still haven't seen it yet. Um, best horror anthology in years by Fangoria.com, and I love horror anthologies, so I got this for like, I think it was like six bucks. Now I like the, this slip cover better than this, that's just kind of, even though it might be what the monster looks like, but... Do we really need that up close to the shot? It looks kind of corny to me, anyway. So, uh, and, uh, this looks cooler. So, this is Trick or Treat. For some reason, it wasn't released in theaters, even though it was slated to be released in theaters. Got this for two bucks. I've been, I still have not checked this out. This is the director's cut of Daredevil, the R rated version. I've heard about it, I have not seen it. So, I thought I'd give it a look. I like Daredevil. I still have the theatrical version on DVD, and I, I, I do, I like Daredevil. I even like the theatrical version. So, I thought I'd give it a look. I got it for two, this is $2, so it wasn't really breaking the bank there. Um, I don't know if I showed this or not, but this is Evolver. 
Have fun with this movie. Yeah, it's a kill bot. <laughs> so I was like, every time I look at it, it's like an unofficial scene with a chopping mall. Uh, the streets fire. I love this movie. My opinion underrated. Michael Bray's great in this dialing in dying lane, smoking hot. Boy, and Defoe's a good villain. Great soundtrack. Doesn't have any features, but I do have the making of uh, VHS, so don't have to worry about that. If this is Frozen, I don't know if I showed it already, but this is a movie that my friends have been talking about being pretty good, so definitely thought I'd give it a look. I got it for like five bucks too, so I'm not not really breaking the bank either. This is Abominable, another movie. Friend, my friends have been talking about. This is the Anchor Bay release. Looks like it might be one of the last Anchor Bay releases when they were still cool before they got bought out by fucking stars. This has a lot of features on it too, so this is Abominable. Um, this is my boyfriend's back. I really do like this film. Look, it's underrated. This DVD is hard to find. I got this for two dollars at a at a thrift store, and uh, no features or anything. But it's written by the guy who wrote Jason Goes to Hell and directed by Bob Babylon. I have a lot of fun with this. It's got a good comic book style to it. Yeah, and it's a movie that I caught as a kid, and I never knew what the, I forgot. I always forgot what the title was. Since he wore plaid a lot, the character, Johnny, I could think it was Dead Men Don't Wear Plaid. Then I find it, no, it's not Dead Men Don't Wear Plaid, it's just a Steve Martin movie. It was like black and white and shit. And I could never figure out what the name of it was. Until years ago, like in Oklahoma, when I found the VHS, and I was like, it's that movie. And then I saw it again and I remembered, you know, how cool it was. It's corny, It's but it's a lot of fun. I like a lot of fun with my boyfriend's back. Clever writing. Really, this is Undead or Alive. It's like two bucks. The trailer looked interesting. Chris Kattan in a western? What in the in the zombie film, dude? Huh? So the same rich entertainment release. It's got some making on it. It's got some features on it. Thought I'd give it a shot. It looked interesting. I just want to see if Chris Kattan could pull this off. You know? Fucking Tower Heist. Eight bucks too much. I got this because my family wanted to see it. This movie's like a lukewarm cup of piss. Just really honestly, pretty disappointing, pretty forgettable. I'd rather see that version that Matt was talking about, all black cast, that'd be a heck of a lot better than this. Not really that funny, and to just misadvertise the hell out of this movie. If it was really that funny, it, it, it's not. It's less of a comedy and more of a heist film. And it's just a tower heist, no, it's, it's a heist film, I understand. But it's less of a comedy, more of a drama. With some comedic moments. I felt cheated with this movie. Just like, you know, I was cheated with, you know, that movie, uh, Paul Pass. So, but Eddie Murphy is good in this for what little he has to do. He has some fun moments. It's nice to see him again in a role where he's trying to be like old Eddie. Even though he looks like his brother in this. <laughs> but Tower Heist, it's pretty forgettable. That's all I gotta say pretty disappointed by that movie um this is the two desert of the outsiders you know do it for Johnny do it for Johnny man classic movie you know they did a good job with this this two disc a lot of good features on it um I got this for two bucks this is Vantage Point I've always wanted to see this movie still haven't seen it yet I don't know why it's got the Quaid man it's got fucking Dennis Quaid in it why haven't I fucking seen this yet so I remember when I saw the trailer before a movie when I saw it with like I don't remember what movie it was that I saw in the theater with my mom and Troy I don't know what movie it was but I saw this trailer before I was like that looks really good and then just never never caught it this is Vantage Point though great cast Dennis Quaid Matthew Fox well Matthew Fox eh. Forrest Whitaker Sam Gurney Weaver and William Hurt Vantage Point still need to check that one out got a good deal on these this is Collections 2, 3, and 4, Dirty Jobs. Micro is great. I really love these shows. Um, one of the best hosts out there. It's just a lot of fun. So, this is... I got, I got them for, like, I think less than $30 total. And then, uh... This is Season 3 of It's Only Sunny in Philadelphia. I have Seasons 1 and 2. Demented, Twisted, Crazy Show. Have fun with it. 
It's crazy, but it's funny. Um, I got this movie in Dead. Yes, I know. It's supposed to be really bad, but I've heard it's supposed to be good. And the trailer looked actually a lot of fun from what I saw for this movie that I got. Or for House of the Dead. The trailer for House of the Dead, they had Undead in it. And it looked like it might be a good movie. And it wasn't Undead. It wasn't House of the Dead. It was some other movie. I don't remember which one it was. But I've heard it was like, the guy from Fangoria, Tony Tim Palms, is the most inventive zombie film since Peter Jackson's Brain Dead. Dementedly funny, stylish, great zombie movie. Of course, Matt says it sucks, and he told me there was something about the ending that just sounds fucking shitty. But I'll definitely let you know about Undead. You know, my opinions on it. Um, then I got this. This is Infection. It's a Japanese horror film. I heard it's like the grudge again. It's not somebody ghost, but the trailer looked interesting. I didn't pay too much for it, so I thought I'd give it a shot. It's Infection. And then, I can't believe I got this for, once again, less than 20 bucks. Because I got this for, like, I think $8 again. This is Warrior. I've been wanting to see this, so I'll definitely give this a look. People are saying it's, like, you know, like Rocky. And, you know, Nick Nolte's really good in it, I guess, and Tom Hardy and things like that. So, I got some... <laughs> well... A <laughs> uh, friend of mine was, you know, talking to me on Skype. Anyway, this is a uh, warrior, of Tom Hardy and Joel Edgerton, and it's a UFC fighting film. So I haven't seen it yet, but I heard a lot of good things about it. And I was the trailer looked interesting. It looked like it might be a good movie. So get for cheap. I'll probably give it a look sometime. Warrior. Um. I also got Daylight, the collector's edition. Um, underrated movie. This has got a lot of features on it, so a lot of fun with this movie. Even though the people in the movie they're stuck in the tunnel are kind of dicks, but hey, you know what can you do? It's Ferris Bueller's Day Off, the Bueller Bueller edition, which is stupid. Just call it special edition. Bueller Bueller edition is dumb. This has a lot of features on it, documentaries and stuff. Classic movie. I had to own it on DVD and I was waiting to own it on the special edition I got it for two bucks so can't go wrong with that and uh, also got Hot Shots and Hot Shots Part 2 I got both of these for ten two movies for ten bucks no it was actually less than that it was, I think it was eight dollars two movies for eight dollars these are actually when the double feature of two DVD sets were actually the actual DVDs that you would get separately look at this it's the same DVD that you would get separately. And they both all both have the features that are on the other DVDs. So you're not getting cheaped or gypped out at all. Hot Shots has the making of an important movie featurette in the article trailer. And Hot Shots Part 2 has the featurette too and the trailer on it. I have a lot of fun with these movies. This is when the Zucker Brothers knew what they were doing. Even though they did not have anything to do with these films, which is understandable. <laughs> no wonder. It's sort of Zucker like, but it's a Jim Abrams. Maybe Jim Abrams should have directed, you know, the scary movie sequels after part after part two. Maybe they'd be better. Maybe Jim Abrams and company should have brought their and Pat Proft should have brought their uh, you know, their touch to those movies. So Hot Shots and Hot Shots Part 2. I like Hot Shots Part 2 better because it's a fucking Rambo parody. And it's actually really clever. So there's I could sound to say those two two movies might be two of my favorite all-time favorite Charlie Sheen films. This is Robert Thunder's a two disc. This has a commentary with Robert Downey Jr. in character. And I watched this again and I have a lot of fun with it. But it's not one of those movies I'm like, oh it's the greatest movie ever. It doesn't have some flaws, but it's a lot of fun. I mean, Robert Downey Jr. is great in this. I'm just a dude playing another dude disguised as another dude. This. Great stuff. So now, I got another stack of DVDs to show you. You're like, man, I, I told you. I, I, I waited too damn long to do this video. So, uh, got one more stack to do. And I got a couple other things to show you guys. Then I'm gonna be done. 
gonna crack the two hours. It's gonna be over two hours. I know. It'd be crazy. Start off with a landmark. The first Blu-ray on the update. Holy sh this is the Blu-ray of the Expendables. I got it for twelve bucks. Used. Only got it because I have a Blu-ray player, because my parents we got a new setup, new flat screen. Got a new Blu-ray player, which also plays DVDs, because it came with speakers that we wanted for our system. That's why. It's a Blu-ray, but it also has the DVD on it, so I'm not just stuck with the Blu-ray. So I got the DVD, we got the Blu-ray here, which looks exactly like a DVD. It's not any different. And then you have the the DVD and you have the digital copy. The digital copy is stupid. It really is. Dumb. But anyway, I love the Expendables, and I wanted another copy of the DVD. And if I, we had a Blu-ray player now, so I was like, okay, I'm going to get Expendables or Blu-ray. Only because it has that documentary, Inferno, which is not on the DVD. Which is bullshit. It's not on the DVD. Fuck it. I get the DVD and the Blu-ray in one in one fill in in one set. So, all right. But it's an awesome movie, and I'm gonna do another review of this leading up, probably before The Expendables 2 comes out, because that review I did was more like defending the film. It wasn't really like a, a review. So, I like to revisit this film again. A lot of fun, and there are some things I don't like about it, but I can get into those later. That's expend The Expendables though is. Really awesome experience in the theater, though. And it'd be cool to see what it looks like on my Blu-ray player. It's Expendables. Blu-ray. That's the only Blu-ray. <laughs> the only other Blu-ray I'm thinking about buying is maybe Jaws, because of that documentary, you know, finally coming out. You know, the shark's still not working. Silent Trigger on DVD. This is one released by Princess you Fuckface, I guess. But even though I don't really think they released it, I think it was originally Dimension or something. Weird. But this doesn't have anything. It's just pan and scan, full screen. I like the film. It's got some flaws, but it's definitely one of the better uh, Dolph Lundgren films. So it's, it's good to have it on DVD. I could definitely say this is probably one of the harder find to find DVDs out there of Dolph. Sound Trigger. Oh, I made my day when I found this. I've been looking for this for months, for years, ever since I checked this out of the library and I wanted this for myself. This is, you know, What's that? Da na na. Yeah. Dun 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 it's like, how come I don't remember the fucking theme? I did a tribute to the fucking music from Escape from New York. Why am I not remembering it? But anyway, this is Escape from New York. This is the ultimate version of the film on DVD. It's a two-disc collector's edition. It looks so badass. It's so cool. Ah. This is when MGM gave a fuck. I mean, MGM did a fucking bang-up job with this disc, this DVD, man. So, let's get that the DVD here. So you get this, also this DVD comes with a comic book. It's like Pliskin Chronicles, which is pretty cool. And then there's kind of a sad, sad, kind of sad thing in, uh, in the little booklet that's in here. It's an advertisement slash booklet of you know the. That's just an ad, and this game never ever came out. Right here, Snake Plissken's Escape. The game is on. Introducing the legendary Andrew here in the video games Namco. The game never came out. Remember correctly? I don't remember this game ever coming out. I don't remember Snake Pl uh, or Escape from a New York game, or a Snake Plissken game. That just sucks. You know how awesome that would be to play Snake Plissken in a fucking video game? It's a missed opportunity, in my opinion. So anyway, you know, this is what... Escape from New York is what Lockout was trying to be, but fucking failed miserably. So basically what this is... You got the features and everything. Um, even though I don't have the booklet that tells me what's going on, but... I don't think it came with a booklet, just the features are listed on the back. 
It's a skiff from New York, the two days. I can't believe it. I got it for ten ninety nine, man. It's a hell of a deal. It's got the audio commentaries, it's got the Escape from New York feature, right? It's got the Making John Carver Snakes Blitzkin Chronicles, which is like the comic book. But yeah, classic movie. Awesome job on the DVD by MGM. This is way before <laughs> before they ended up being bankrupt so yeah great film great dvds this is the best way to own it escape from new york great film another good uh, dvd here stand by me classic film this is deluxe edition you know it's kind of i mean you get this kind of photo book thing but it's it's just kind of well it has some it's basically got a lot of information from the press kit basically and all the features on this are pretty much the same as the other special edition DVD that came out. But it's still stand by me. And then you also get the soundtrack. I wanted to give this again because this is another movie I grew up watching as a kid. And it showed you that Stephen King can do something other than horror. That, you know, because the, the movie's based on his, his short story, his novella, The Body. It's just a great film. Just and you know, great performance for River Phoenix. You could really see the potential that he had of being a great lead. It's really too bad that his star got waste his star waned before it, you know, got as bright as it could have, basically. This is Mr. Mom. Um, MGM release. It has a little collectible booklet, which I always liked about these early MGM releases that kinda of talk about little production notes things but this is a classic um great movie michael keaton's great in this a lot of fun a really a really a lot of fun movie and i want to give it another chance i love keaton too mr mom um then i also got the breakfast club this is the flashback edition this has a bunch of features on it, it has a 12-part documentary since you were yours interviews with the cast it's got the, something about the origins of the Rat Pack, and it's got a commentary of Judd Nelson and Anthony Michael Hall. This is like the ultimate version of the Breakfast Club, basically. Um, this is North Star. Wanted to check this out. This is the only film, this is the first time this movie's been released in widescreen. It's got Christopher Lambert in it, James Caan, and it's like a period piece. And it always looked interesting. Sort of like a western in Alaska with Christopher, Christopher Lambert. So I get North Star. We got the Naked Gun trilogy, which I think I got for ten bucks. So that's a good deal to get three movies, ten bucks. Once again, this is another set that the DVDs all have the same features that the other DVDs had. The commentaries by the Zucker brothers and the trailers and stuff. But the first Naked Gun doesn't have as many, the features that the other special did. There, I think there's like a special edition of the Naked Gun that has more features on it. I don't really care because. It's nice to get all three of them in one. You know, I like it. That's what I like going to buybacks. I get those deals where I can pay like eight ninety nine. That's how much I paid for it. Nine bucks and get three movies. So that's Naked Gun Trilogy. Two ninety nine I think it was like three ninety nine for this two disc of Lost Boys. My other two disc is in Oklahoma. I wanted to get another one. Lost Boys are great. I never got a chance to watch the documentaries. So that's another reason why. Fantastic movie. Great, great two disc special edition. This is definitely a guarantee. It's hard to find on DVD. This is Letters from a Killer with Patrick Swayze. So I was curious to see about that. See this movie. Different kind of per performance by Patrick Swayze. He's a guy who's on Death Row. So this is Letters from Killer. DVD full frame, but I guarantee it's pretty hard to find. I got it for like five bucks. And then I got Behind the Mask of Rising Linden Vernon, because I heard a lot about it. And that, you know, and company and the cast is just like chock full of horror icons and classics. And, and the trailer looked interesting, and I just have never actually seen this film. So I wanted to pick it up for about five bucks. And I got this movie that looked really interesting. This is Unspeakable with. This actually has a. Dana Meyer from, uh, you know, from Search of Troopers. It's also got Dennis Hopper, the late Dennis, great Dennis Hopper, Lance Henriksen, Jeff Fahey, and Jeff Fahey. 
and uh, it sounded interesting. It was like a suspenseful psychological thriller, and it looked interesting. So this is unspeakable. So hopefully it doesn't isn't unspeakably shitty. And then this is the weird science. This is the flashback edition. So just like a Breakfast Club, this is the flashback edition. I don't really need this. Do do I really need that? I mean, don't really, just kind of a waste of paper. This has the four-part documentary on on the film, and a pilot a pilot episode of Weird Science, the TV show. But I don't mind the TV show. It's a theatrical trailer. But I got it for five bucks. I was like, yeah, Weird Science special edition. Yeah, I love Weird Science. It's a great movie. Weird Science. Weird. To live and die in L.A. special edition. MGM the U.S. special edition. Um, commentary. It's got a documentary on it. Classic movie, one of the one freaking best. And then I'm getting pretty down. I got a couple more. Got this at a good. I got this at a thrift store. This is Robot Chicken season one, for like three ninety nine. I got it for four bucks. Works pretty well. Classic season one. I love the. I love this. I really do love. Uh, I really, I mean, I really do love all the stuff, you know, like, uh, the first season had that great, uh, Justice League, you know, a great superheroes in the real world episode, that was great, great show, ambitious, a lot of fun, Jaws, a special edition with new footage, <laughs> Jaws, Jaws talks, and Jaws is funny, and I got these two, these are the last two DVDs, Ed Wood, the special edition, which has a lot of features on it. I guess this one, Touchstone, actually gave a crap and actually gave a movie features. Probably because it's a freaking Tim Burton film. But this is one of my favorite Johnny Depp films. I like Ed Wood a lot. A lot of fun. Um, then I got Dragon Angry. Because I heard from my friends it's not really that bad. And this isn't the 3D version. It's regular 2D. And Patrick Lessier, he directed, I think, My Bloody Valentine 3D. And I didn't mind that. And I heard it's a lot, of, you know... Nick Cage, some brutal violence, some good blood and guts, some good action. Don't tell me Nick Cage in the back doesn't sort of look like Cameron Poe. Kind of look at it, might like Con Air too, in a way. Stop being blurry. Can we, hey, hey webcam, clear up. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's drive angry. And uh, that's it for the DVDs, but I got some... Really special, kind of real quick, some special stuff to show you. Um, I was going to show a little bit more, but I'm getting kind of tired because it's been a long video. Uh, but I'm definitely going to show you guys this. These couple things here. And one more last truly really badass thing. This is a little collector's item here. This 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 was who is Darth Vader. This was sent to people the video distributors to get them hyped for Dark Man. Um for Dark Man coming out on DVD, I guess. And th this is missing something. This is missing masks. This came with like masks of like Liam Neeson, I guess. They're kind of weird, but anyway, for the Dark Man fan of me, but it was inexpensive, so I was like, okay, cool. That is pretty cool. And this folds out. It's pretty elaborate video store display type thing. Um, this is what it all looks like, I think, like this. So, so yeah, this is Dark Man video display store thing from like back in the 90s. So, it's a good thing for a Dark Man fan. Now, here we go. This is the Blob press kit. This is the press kit from the Blob. Yes. This is the same thing that the press would get when the Blob came out in 1988. Now this comes with this, which is basically, you know, the press kit, you know, booklet thing. Which does basically the cast and crew, you know, like what you see at the end credits. And then it has little uh, production notes. Now some of these production notes, some of this stuff is misspelled. I, I just read through some of it and some of these are some really bad misspellings in some of these things. It has little biographies of the actors and 
little production notes and stuff. So, okay, that's cool. But it, of course, it's 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 authentic. TriStar Pictures. Right now, TriStar Pictures. Got the white horse. This is the press information. Then you get these these really cool still photos. The blob. These are still black and white photos of the blob. No, I already opened it. It was an open when I got it, and I'm not gonna, you know, it wasn't gonna be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna leave it unopened. Save the value. This one picture. This is of Shawnee Smith. And one of Kevin Dillon. These are basically what you, what kind of lobby cards, basically. And uh, another one. Yeah, pretty much probably after they. they Blew up the blob at the end, or pretty much while well, everything's going crazy. Probably when he said before, you know, after he said, I think you pissed it off. And you have more cool photos here. The blob. And then you have a pretty good amount of photos here. You have another one, Aftermath in the Snow. Blob. They're not color, which. Okay, this really matter is still pretty awesome. Uh, Kevin Dillon, there we go. Kevin Dillon looking awesome. Then we got we got Shawnee Smith, probably while she's jumping off the snowmaker, looking pretty awesome too. And then we actually got Chuck Russell. Looking pretty fucking about awesome and you know, directing. Being awesome director that he is. So yeah, that's 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 press kit for the blob, which any blob fan is probably would love this if really you know you know, I got a lot of blob merchandise. I got the blob on laser disc, I got a blob and deep blob on D V D. The blog. I got I got it on v VHS, you know. I got the press kit, I got the novelization. The only thing I don't have is like props from the film, but those are really expensive. So I don't really want the movie poster unless it's the VHS rental poster, because the movie poster is kind of lame. But anyway, that's the blob press kit. And then I got one more thing. And uh, yeah, one more thing to show you guys. And then I'm gonna end this video. Cause it's not only getting pretty long, but it's also getting pretty kind of late on my end. If you know what I mean. So here we go. This piece of vintage awesomeness was had by me for about 25 bucks on eBay. This is something that you would see in a video store, and there's a display. And it works, it lights up and everything. Um, first, I'm going to show it to you, and then I'm going to try to light it up for you. <laughs> this is an official, see, Baker and Taylor video probably isn't around anymore. This is an official, see, you can see the Ryan Home video logo. Standy for video storage for Robocop. It's just awesome. Really. That's awesome as you can get. I mean, really, really freaking cool. Now, just by itself, it looks pretty cool, right? Well, there's more to it. This display also lights up. Now, let me pass the stack of DVDs and laser discs and tapes. Plug this in. See what's going on here. It's old, so it might have a moment where it kind of, you know, jitters a bit. Now I'm going to turn it on first, and then I'm going to lift it up. Let's see if it works. Okay, it works good. Okay, we got it. There we go. That is. The Robocop display in action. Lit up. Awesomeness. Now, probably look better from far away or kind of bright. So, yeah, that's the Robocop display. Vintage Robocop. 
this fillet. So, um, <laughs> that's it. Uh, thanks for watching the update, and I will see you later. See ya.